Hi everyone, my name is Abby Abrahamson and I am the College Outreach Coordinator and Newsletter Editor at Biodiversity for Global Climate. And we're very excited to welcome Fred Magdoff um, for a presentation today called Soil versus Dirt. Um, Fred is an Emeritus Professor of Plant and Soil Scientist at the University of Vermont. And his interests range from soil science to ag agriculture, to food um, and to the environment, to the US economy. His research at UVM has won, was on ecologically sound ways to improve soil fertility, especially focusing on the critical role of soil organic matter. He is the co-author of the fourth edition of a book called Building Crops for Better Soil, Sustainable Soil Management, available free for downloading on the web, and also What Every Environmentalist Needs to Know About Capitalism, which was published in 2011, um, as well as a number of other books on agriculture and on the US economy. Um, he has also written numerous articles on environmental issues, including on ecological agriculture, production and use of biofuels, ecological civilization, population, global resource depletion, and the environmental and social problems of capitalist agriculture. So thank you, Fred, for joining us, and we're very excited to hear your presentation. My, my pleasure to be here with you. So let's uh, let's get into it, and I'll uh, share the screen. And uh, so uh, I've been asked to, to talk about uh, soil versus dirt. Uh, let me let me get rid of dirt pretty quickly, okay? Because that's not terribly interesting to me anyway. Uh, and I'll come back to this photograph in in, in a minute. But uh, one of dirt is basically particle material that's out of place. It's some place that you don't want it. It's say uh, you dragged it into the house on your shoes. Uh, it settles in your you have dust that settles in the house. Uh, and uh, when soils are mistreated, uh, basically they can turn to dirt, if you will. Uh, this is uh, on the left-hand side is a slide from the uh, from the Dust Bowl uh, era, where the dust storms out in the the uh, Kansas, uh, Oklahoma, Texas area uh, basically formed clouds that uh, went all the way to the East Coast, to Washington D.C. and out out to um, out to out to the Atlantic. Uh, locally, uh, sands were left behind. These are silt and clay particles that, that went high in the sky. Um, and uh, you were left with degraded soils. And of course, people were, were, were fleeing from this. So this is soil that in, in essence turned into dirt. And when it became dirt, it became very susceptible to wind erosion and also, by the way, to, to water erosion. Okay. Soils, uh, I consider them to be the great underappreciated natural resource of the world. Uh, when people think of natural resources, they think of old forests and, you know, the, the wildlife that's there, aquatic systems. Uh, you might think of mineral deposits as a natural resource. Very few people would, if you ask them to, to name the natural resources, would give soils as, as one of the not, not only one of the natural resources of the world, but also one of the more important ones. And, um, and it is basically the, the um, it is the basis for all terrestrial life. And I'll get into that in a second. But soils have biological, chemical, and physical properties. And there's an architecture to them. And I'll show you a little bit about that. They're, they're arranged in certain ways and different soils are arranged in different ways. And uh, they can have different horizons and look differently. I'll show you a few photographs just to give you an idea of a little bit of the, of the complexity of soils. So um, this is, a, this is a, uh, a corrected quote from, from the King James version of, of Genesis, okay? I mean, of, of the Bible. Uh, you might be familiar with it, uh, for dust thou art and unto dust thou shalt return, but that is actually not the correct translation for the word afar, the Hebrew word. Uh, and there are a number of Hebrew words for soil, one of which, by the way, is Adama, where Adam, the word, the name for Adam comes from soil. And of course, in the Bible, supposedly God made Adam out of soil. So there was something about soil that uh, that um, 
a lot of ancient people sort of understood and knew about. Uh, you find it also uh, some important uh, uh, material in the um, in the uh, in the Chinese uh, literature, um, in the Greek about misuse of soils, and the Iliad, and in Plato, uh, there are some very interesting statements about that. So, but you do literally come from the soil, okay? Everything that you have in your body, aside of me, you drink water, I know that, and, and, but, but all the food you eat, which produced you and produced your parents and the, the baby food you ate and the milk you drank from your mother, uh, they all came from the soil, all the nutrients in that. The calcium in your bones and your teeth, uh, the phosphorus, came from the soil. The, the iron in your hemoglobin and your blood cells came from the soil, okay? Uh, everything inside you came from the soil. There's one exception, uh, which I'll talk about. And, and uh, basically, it was, they were taken up by plants, these nutrients. The plants used them to grow, and you ate the plant, or you ate uh, an animal that ate the plants, okay? Or, or, the bi or, or a product of the animal, like milk or eggs, that, um, that was produced by animals. So literally, unless you're taking supplements that were made from minerals, uh, you know, inorganic minerals, you are, you are from the soil, okay? Now, carbon is the one exception, and it's a major exception. Of course, carbon uh, that, that's inside us, which is where carbon-based uh, life forms, if you will, um, and carbon is the basic structure for organic molecules. And, and for our, for the sugars, the starches, uh, you know, those are all, you know, the structure of them, the, the backbone, as they say, is our carbon atoms tied together. And so uh, the carbon, of course, was uh, produced in the form that we can use. It was produced by plants taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and through the process of photosynthesis, uh, converting it into, um, into uh, all the things that the plants needed to grow the sugars, the starches, the proteins, et cetera, all the organic molecules. So carbon didn't come from the soil, although carbon in soil is a very important issue, and I will get to that. Okay, so uh, another thing about soils is that they're part of global cycles. And this also a lot of people don't quite understand, but uh, the global carbon cycle uh, has soil as a very important part. And there's no need for you to memorize this diagram. There are plenty of them like this. And it's in the book, by the way, that, uh, that, uh, that Abby mentioned at the beginning, which is freely available um, online. Um, and But carbon dioxide gets taken out of the atmosphere by plants, as I talked about on the left-hand side. And, um, and as the plants die, their roots die, as they nourish the microorganisms and other organisms in the soil, uh, some of that soil, uh, some of that material stays behind in the soil as carbon, living carbon, that is organisms, which I'll talk about, and also uh, decomposing uh, organic matter, de organisms that died, old roots that, that are there, old uh, plant stems that, that somehow got into the soil, etc. cetera. So there's, uh, there is about three times more carbon stored in soils than is, stored, than is in the atmosphere above, okay? So uh, this is a, a major storehouse for carbon uh, in the system, you know, that's, that's in, in, in the global ecosystem. Um, there's just a story, by the way, about uh, in yesterday's New York Times, a section which I haven't read yet about the importance of, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, organic soils. I think it's in, the Cong in Congo in Africa, the, uh, the swamps, uh, the peat type soils uh, for storing carbon. Those, there's, they, those are almost 100% carbon uh, and apparently quite a large area of them there and there are other areas around the world as well. So, uh, but soils are also part of the nitrogen cycle, which is a global cycle and the hydrologic cycle because water comes down from the atmosphere when it rains and it either enters the soil or it runs off, maybe causing erosion. And, it, and we'd like it to enter the soil to recharge aquifers, to stay in the soil, to provide the plant, plants with, uh, with water for their growth. Uh, so um, soil storage of water is one of its very important properties. 
just want to get back to that original photograph that was on the, the first slide. Just taking a look at this, this is a cut into the soil. You can see that there's white clover up there and, and some grass is growing as well, grass clover mix, I guess. Uh, but you can see that these, the, you're not looking in general at individual soil particles. There's some gravel pieces of, you know, larger particles like gravel uh, in there. But, but what you're looking at here, can you see my pointer, by the way? Yeah, okay. This is a soil aggregate over here. So it's a bunch of particles put together with organic matter, old roots in there, et cetera. So, uh, so there is a structure to the soil locally, and there's a structure in three dimensions as well. I mean, locally, just if you dig into the soil, particles are, are stuck together as aggregates and organic matter helps, helps that to happen. So there's also a three dimension. This brings, by the way, the the, the topic of the, uh, of the talk together. This is a, a t-shirt you can actually buy, uh, stop treating soil like dirt. And the idea is to treat it with respect and to, uh, to use ecological you know, approaches. But one of the things that shows you is that there's a, that, that third dimension going down, that there are horizons in soils, there are layers that, that uh, look different, behave differently, uh, there's the topsoil, uh, the darker layer up on top. Uh, there's the initial subsoil, and then the uh, the lowest le level called the sea horizon is uh, is only partially decomposed rocks and and uh, sand and whatever. So uh, so there there is that structure. This just shows you a, a soil in three dimensions. I mean, you know, excuse me, it's, you're only seeing two. You're not seeing the, the real third dimension, but but it's. Uh, you can see the horizons, the organic. This is a, a forest soil in Vermont. Uh, it's our state soil, by the way, every state has a state soil. And this is a, you can see more organic matter near the surface, very dark. Then there's that white, uh, almost ashen color um, layer. Then there's a, a, a reddish uh, black uh, layer, some black mixed in, which is some organic matter. This is iron also. And then you can see the the layer down below, which has a, has a bunch of rocks in here and not a lot of decomposed material. So you, you've, you're coming to bedrock there, which is down, down below here. So this is just a different soil. This is out in the, uh, in the drier uh, Great Plains with prairies. Uh, and what you're seeing is a very dark uh, layer up on surface, which has a lot of organic matter. And then down below, these white, um, uh, pieces that you're seeing are really nodules of calcium carbonate of lime, limestone that have uh, been uh, been deposited in this dry uh, climate, leached down and and um, deposited there. Uh, let's see what we got. So, so soil consists of minerals of different sizes: sand, silt, and clay. Organic matter, the the living organic matter, and the dead organic matter. There was uh, one scientist from Vermont uh, over 100 years ago said there's actually three different types of organic matter. He said there's the living, there's the dead, and there's the very dead. And talking to farmers, they like that. The very dead's really referring to the well decomposed stuff or the or the, the organic matter that's not easily decomposable. Okay, that that organisms can't get a hold of. And then you have spaces or pores. Uh, that roots grow through, and, and they're either filled with air or water, uh, usually. Uh, and this is how the roots get their air, the oxygen that they need. They, that's how they get rid of the CO2 and, and how the, they get their water that uh, is essential for plant growth. It takes about uh, at least uh, five, well, three, 300 pounds to 500 pounds of water to produce one pound of plant dry material. So plants use a lot of water. Okay, let me get to the organisms, the living organisms, which, which is very important. You hear a lot about biodiversity. Uh, you hear very little about biodiversity in soils. And it's very important because you have in soils plant growth promoting organisms. The diversity helps maintain low population of disease organisms if it's diverse. If it's not diverse, the disease, or, disease organisms can explode in populations. Some uh, organisms help to trigger plant defense mechanisms for, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, help them protect themselves 
from insects and bacteria. And there's a whole, I don't have time to get into it, but that's a very, very interesting aspect of, um, of plants. They have defense mechanisms just like animals do, like we do. And there is a plant microbiome. There's been a lot of discussion recently, you know, I'm talking about the last decade or so, about the human microbiome, you know, living, all these organisms that are living on site, outside on our skin and inside us. Um, but plants have a microbiome too. And they have it uh, on their roots and they have it on their leaves too, and the stems. So these are just some, uh, some examples of, of, of organisms living in the soil. On the top right is a fungus. This is the, excuse me, this is a nematode that's feeding a on a fungal hyphae, okay? So this is a nematode that specializes in feeding on fungal hyphae. There are different nematodes with different uh, specializations in soils. These are like little tiny worms, but you, you, you normally can't see them with a naked eye. Down below you have a, a fungus that has these like little circles or lassos and, uh, and nematodes will swim along and go, go into them and get trapped in them. And the nematode eventually will die. And the fungus then uses the nematode as its food source so that you have nematodes that eat fungi, you have fungi that eat nematodes, you have nematodes that eat bacteria also. Uh, they exclusively do that. They're nematodes that, that also eat on plant roots. Um, so they maybe plant uh, pests, if you will, for, for uh, agricultural soils. These are just some other organisms. These are, uh, these are fungi uh, taken from soils, paramecium, of course, uh, earthworm here. And this is uh, some amoeba that are surrounding as they do bacteria and engulfing them. And, and, uh, and these, are, these are all soil organisms. And then of course there are larger organisms as well. One of the important uh, soil organisms that li lives in a, uh, in a symbiotic, that is a mutually a helpful relationship with plants are uh, these mycorrhizal fungi. And this is a wheat root where all that hairy stuff around it, those, those aren't root hairs, those are, that's mycorrhizal fungi. And you can see a spore of the fungi, of the fungus. And they really help plants. The plants provide them with food, um, you know, with sugars and things like that. And, uh, and it's basically an extension of the root system, helping to supply the plants with, uh, with, uh, with uh, water, especially in phosphorus, but other nutrients as well. They also protect the plants just from occupying those sites. They protect those sites from infection by other types of fungi uh, that might be a parasitic or by bacteria. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very helpful, we want to promote this. And there are ways to do that, by the way. So we have this huge food web in the soil. Again, it's this diagram from, from the uh, building soils for better crops. And uh, I won't go through it all, but it starts on the lower right with plant residues. And you've got your primary consumers, and then you've got the guys that eat the primary consumers. So they're the secondary consumers. And then there's the, the critters that eat the secondary consumers. And uh, these are all living in soils or walking on soils or both. Uh, or use the soil at one point for their, uh, for their habitat. One thing I, I want to talk about, which is a critical one when we talk about food sovereignty and uh, uh, issues, uh, is that, uh, that soils that are healthy, and I'll, I'll talk about that towards the end, which is very soon, uh, can be degraded. In other words, you can degrade just about any soil. Some soils are easy to degrade, others are more difficult to degrade. But one of the scourges uh, around the world is a downward spiral of soil degradation, where intensive tillage, that is plowing the soil, breaking up the aggregates with, uh, with the plow and harrows, uh, causes uh, soil surfaces of sea to become compact and a crust forms that seals the surface, causes increased runoff, you get more organic matter decreased because it's taking erosion as the water's running off and it's taking the best part of the soil, the, the, the most rich in organic matter. And it just keeps going. And that leads to more, less water storage, uh, fewer organisms, fewer nutrients for plants, crop yields are reduced and it just keeps going. And you can end up with really um, 
poor quality soils where, where people need to apply a lot of fertilizers, pesticides uh, to, uh, to grow things in those soils. And uh, if this was a different talk, I'd be talking about healthy soils and, and how we promote them, uh, which I'd be happy to talk about, but I just wanted to show you that this is not a new issue. Uh, this is from the Iliad. Many a hillside do the torrents flow deeply and down, whoops, I can't see, down to the dark sea. They rush headlong from the mountains with a mighty roar and the tilled fields of men are wasted. And uh, there's a very interesting quote also from Plato, which was obviously hundreds of years later, but also talking about uh, the problems with erosion and the problems with runoff and how the springs have dried up um, uh, where, uh, where some of their shrines were. And uh, anyway, pe people became aware and, and they dealt with it in different ways, which is a topic for a whole other discussion as well. Whoops, let me go back here. I'm gonna to touch this again. Oh yeah. So uh, this is the last slide I have. And uh, basically this is from an experiment at the Rodale Institute in Pennsylvania. And uh, this was the same soil uh, maybe 15 years before. And they, were, uh, they, had, uh, two, they had three different treatments. One was a conventional, what's called cash grain, like corn and soybeans and corn and soybeans. Uh, and the other one was, uh, they may have grown some corn and soybeans, but they also grew hay crops. Uh, they uh, fed the hay to cows, they put manure on it. And, um, and just take a look at it. You know, if you were a root, would you rather be growing on the soil on the left or the soil on the right? Okay. I could give this as a quiz, but I won't. But, but uh, any self-respecting root would rather be growing on the right. And you can see on your right, okay? You can see that the soil is a darker color. It has better structure to it, more aggregation that's sort of lost here. It becomes more um, massive uh, chunks together instead of the nice aggregates like that. And, uh, and this is a difference because of management, okay? So uh, I talked about soil degradation before. Well, here both were going on. In one of the treatments, the soils were becoming somewhat degraded, not terribly, but somewhat degraded, definitely. And on the other treatment that went on, the same treatment for many, many years over different rotations, uh, you actually improved the health of that soil. And uh, the whole point, in my opinion, of, of uh, managing soils uh, nowadays is to try to create healthy soils that create healthy plants that are better able to defend themselves from, um, from insects or, um, or uh, uh, pathogens like uh, bacteria or viruses. And so, uh, so soil is, uh, let me just leave you with this. It's, it's complex. It's, um, it's, it is a, uh, when you walk on it, you should be thinking of what's going on down there, of all the different processes that are happening in the soil. And uh, if you have a garden, uh, you, sh you should be trying to get organic matter into your soil, which, uh, which is the heart of the story of soil health, as if you take a look at the book, uh, you, you'll find out, and there are other sources as well. Uh, so I think I'll end with that. And uh, that is the difference between soil and dirt. Soil is living, breathing, air goes into the soil, oxygen, carbon dioxide comes out of the soil because of all the organisms that are living in there, and which includes, of course, plant roots. And, uh, and dirt is lifeless uh, particles uh, that are in places that we don't want them. Uh, and uh, and uh, that is uh, the difference. And uh, we want soils, but not only soils, we want healthy soils. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a wonderful presentation and um, yeah, such important information too. So thank you for sharing this. Um, we really appreciate your time. So thank you for doing this. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs>